back to the London Marathon on BBC One after a summary of the news now from Peter Sissons. Good afternoon. Two people have been killed and 38 injured in a bomb attack on a bus in central Israel. A suicide bomber is thought to have died in the incident in a town just north of Tel Aviv. The Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon says the Palestinian Authority is to blame. Morning rush hour, and Israelis were waiting for the bus. But nowadays, even that's a lethal pastime. Two were killed, one is thought to be the suicide bomber. More than 40 bystanders were hurt, some with shrapnel wounds and burns. The attack was clearly meant to maim and kill civilians. The shock of this, hard to bear, even if bombs do come now almost by the week. This attack bears the hallmark of Islamic extremist groups but Israel blames Yasser Arafat. Clearly terrorism is continuing against Israel, terrorism emanating from the area under the responsibility of Yasser Arafat. The government says it will strike back because Israel's public can't live like this. Hilary Anderson, BBC News, Jerusalem. The Conservatives Home Affairs spokesman Anne Widdicombe has described the pre-election pledge on race as silly but said she'd signed it to stop it becoming a distraction. She also said the Commission for Racial Equality had not behaved responsibly. Good morning. Thank you very much. Anne Widdicombe's intervention is only likely to fuel the political row over the Commission for Racial Equality's pledge. She signed up to it, but only reluctantly. I don't want the distraction of your profession trying to sidetrack the whole discussion into whether or not I've signed this silly pledge. But I do regard it as an unnecessary pledge. When he signed the compact with other leaders, William Hague says he was doing so on behalf of all his party. But it's backfired. The Tories are now accusing Labour and the CRE of using it to score political points, rather than tackling racism. There's been a major deflection from discussing those issues to matters like uh, political parties squabbling with each other mm. to establish who is more or less racist than the other. Now that is something which, which frankly, I'm saddened by. Labour says it's only the Tory leader who has problems, but the government's own record on race is coming under fire too. Jonathan Beale, BBC News. Now boxing, and you can see the World Championship fight between Lennox Lewis and Hasmin Rahman at 7 o'clock tonight on BBC One. So if you want to keep the surprise, get out of the room now. OK, for the rest of us, the news is that Lennox Lewis suffered a defeat in the fifth round of his fight in South Africa, a result which is being seen as one of the most dramatic in the history of the sport. The fight was billed as Thunder in Africa, a contest Lennox Lewis couldn't lose, and Britain's most successful heavyweight certainly looked the part. But Hasim Rahman had prepared hard in the high altitude of Johannesburg, and he never looked in trouble. One punch ended the fight. In round five, a right cross caught Lewis on the chin, and his 15th world title fight was over. I did all my training, and I came over to it, you see one punch. One punch power with the right hand. Boy, I can't believe that. That's the only thing I can say. Um, you know, I come with a, a good shot, but boy, I, I didn't even see it. But I felt fine after. Lennox Lewis is guaranteed a rematch, but he may have to wait his turn for it. David Eads, BBC News, Johannesburg. As you've probably seen, more than 30,000 runners are taking part in the 21st London Marathon, which is still going on. But the winners have already crossed the line. The women's race has been won by Dorato Tulu, twice winner of the Olympic 10,000 metres. Abdel Kader El Mouaziz of Morocco won the men's marathon, and Tani Gray Thompson has won the wheelchair race. That's it. There are news bulletins every hour on BBC News 24, but I'll be back with more news at 5.15 here on BBC One. Hello there. We've had some ideal weather for the uh, marathon this morning, but for the week ahead, the, very, the weather very much more unsettled. Quite a change, really, from what we had last week. We've lost the northerly winds, so it should be less cold. If anything, the wind's coming in from the west, so it will be much more unsettled with showers or longer spells of rain. And that process is starting already, really. Uh, rain edging in from the west. It'll move eastwards through today, tonight and tomorrow, particularly persistent, I think, across England and Wales, so because of that there could well be some localised flooding. Let's see how that rain has gathered then through today. It's really across many western areas, but it is so very slow moving 
and that's really the, the problem because there could well be some localised flooding because it is so slow. You can see the trend through the next 24 hours or so is to take the rain gradually further and further eastwards, allowing some drier and brighter weather to edge in from the west eventually. Now that rain has been quite heavy already overnight in South Wales. We've had 15 millimetres of rain around Plymouth, around half an inch or so. Had some rain further north as well in towards Belfast. Here the rain is starting to ease away, so some brighter skies moving in through this afternoon. One or two rather heavy showers though. Elsewhere, a lot of cloud around through the rest of today. Further bursts of rain for central and western areas. East of the meridian though, it should be dry and bright, may even be a little more hazy sunshine. Temperatures though rather disappointing, especially underneath all that cloud and the rain. And there'll be some more rain overnight and probably quite a wet start for many of us through tomorrow morning. That rain heaviest in the morning, gradually slipping its way further eastwards and dying out just a little, and certainly some brighter weather for Western Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales and the South West. Those temperatures, well, 9 or 10 degrees, still quite disappointing really underneath all that cloud again. All that cloud and rain due to this area of low pressure and weather front, that's going to move out of the way, allowing the next low to move in from the Atlantic and bringing us some more wet weather. Now the overnight rain will clear away from the North Sea coast during the morning and then some brighter skies before those showers gather and push up from the southwest. And then on to Wednesday, the middle of the week, well there could well be some warm sunshine around and some places will stay dry, but through the day those showers will develop some heavy and possibly thundery. Temperatures again on Thursday up to 13 or 14, a quieter day, fewer showers, most places probably will stay dry, but we end the week on a wet note, rain coming in from the west, temperatures near normal, goodbye. You're invited to a star-studded party on Saturday night with special guests Anastasia, Jimmy Nail and Jerry Halliwell. It's raining men, hallelujah. Plus the National Lottery, Thunderball and Lottery Extra Draws live. We've got the biggest stars and the best music. Welcome to the party. Make a date with Dale Winton for the new series, The National Lottery Stars, Saturday at 7.45 on BBC One.